Well, one of the top trends is golden years. This is going to be the year that gold takes off. I mentioned again about interest rates. Very simple. The lower interest, the lower interest rates go, the deeper the dollar falls. This is the beginning of the death of the dollar. The deeper the dollar falls, the higher gold prices go up. Welcome back to Soar Financially. Welcome back here on this channel where we discuss the macro to understand the micro. The micro being for us commodities, particularly the precious metals, gold and silver, but also mining stocks. And we're trying to make sense of, of it. What is happening in the world? What is affecting gold prices, uh, silver prices as well? But why are the mining stocks not moving or why are they moving? Let, let's discuss that. And we're going to discuss some trends here. We'll do a bit of a recap of 2023 and of course try to forecast 2024. So much going on on in the world and uh, found a fantastic guest to discuss this here between Christmas and New Year's. It's Gerald Salenti of the Trends Journal. He's the publisher over there, but he's also the founder of the Trends Research Institute. So really looking forward to this discussion, Gerald. Thank you so much for joining us again. Welcome back. Well well, thank you for having me. Absolutely. You're the fantastic guest. Who better to discuss trends with than you? And uh, let, let's dive right in, Gerald. Let's let's discuss 2023. What were some of the top trends you saw last year? Uh, markets, geopolitics, the floor is yours. Well, on the market front, uh, we had forecast back in November uh, of this year, of last year, excuse me, in, in, in 2022, that the markets would go up strongly at least the S&P 500 over 16% for 2023 and it went up much more than that and it was very simple and <clears throat> what we do is we look at the data and and it was if you go over the last 40 midterm elections in the United States the S&P 500 went up on average 16.3% and we said it's just going to keep going it's the way the game is played and that's what happened on the geopolitical front, one of our top trends for 2023 was Middle East meltdown. And here we are in front of everybody's eyes. It is the most disgusting element in my lifetime to see day after day after day after day the slaughter of innocent people by the Israelis, bombing the place into ruins, and stealing my money to do it. So as the rest of the plantation workers of Slavelandia, so the military industrial complex could send them the weapons to slaughter these people. We warned about this. You go back again, as we used to say in the Bronx, People don't know dick about shit. When this murderous bastard, Netanyahu, got elected in December of 2022 as prime minister, he passed a pushed through a Judicial Reform Act. There were protests going on in Israel. Everybody forgot this. 39, 39 weeks in a row. The president of Israel, Isaac Herzog, called it a civil war. But then Hamas attacked, killed some 1,200 Israelis. And by the way, now the data is out, over 500 of them were military or security. And there's the pictures of the Israeli and Max Blumenthal, a Jewish guy from the gray zone, put all the data out there. So again, it's not being Jewish or anti-Semite. I launched Occupy Peace. I'm not anti-American for hating America's wars, not anti-Jewish for hating Israel's wars. I hate warmongers. Anyway, the helicopters shooting at the people when the Gaza, when the Hamas were taking them away, killing Israelis, killing Israelis, and Israeli tank fly, firing into the kibbutz. So now, what do we have? That all of the civil war was forgotten. One of my sayings is, when all else fails, they take you to war. Netanyahu's whole ratings were in the toilet where he should be flushed down, and they still are. 
But they do it all the time. What followed the Great Depression, World War II? What followed the dot-com bus, the war on terror? This is, World War III has begun. We said World War III began in your Trends Journal back in February 22nd, two days before Russia invaded Ukraine. COVID war to Ukraine war to World War. World War III has begun and Israel's going to keep expanding this. Oh, oh, they just killed an, an, an Iranian general in Syria. Hey, we could kill anybody we want, anywhere we want. But you don't do anything to us. Oh, no, no. We have a right to defend ourselves. We could bomb Lebanon. We could bomb Syria. We could kill whoever we want. And the United States sends them money to do it. You got maniacs in charge. So World War III has begun. That was one of our top trends for 2023. Middle East meltdown. Now keep going with it. Hey, you see uh, gold prices? Oh, safe haven asset, huh? Oh, you see all the all of the, the, the central banks buying up gold in 2023? Oh, only at record levels. But let's not talk about it. We will keep it out of the news. We won't talk about gold. It's only, you know... The crazy people. <laughs> yeah. So th this is our. With that, this is what I'm concerned about the most. And then there's a thing in Israel called the Samson option. If we lose, we go nuke. And they're going to lose. You don't have to be really smart to think about this. How many people are there in the world? Uh, eight billion. Of that eight billion, how many of them are Arabs? About two billion. And how many of them are Jews? A uh, little under 16 million. Wait a minute. 2 billion against 16 million? What are you kidding me? <laughs> so Israel's going to keep ramping this up, and the United States government is totally, 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 totally in support of it. Just as the United States government has killed eh, million something people in Iraq. Several hundred thousand in Afghanistan. I grew up during the Vietnam War. They only killed three and a half million Vietnamese. There are maniacs in charge. That's my greatest concern. Well, I think we've discussed that as well, Gerald, as well. Do, do, do we really need a war to keep the economy afloat as well? It should take a step back to even zoom out a little further. The motivation of, you know, the escalation as well. Uh, I think Simon Hunt mentioned in an interview to us before that the bond market is the root of all evil meaning capitalism and money is the root of all evil. Do you, would, you, would you agree? Is that uh, the main driver? You, 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 mentioned, uh, you mentioned the warmongers, um, the, you know, the intra industrial complex there. Is, is that uh, the main driver? No, it's, 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 it's just part of it. You know, you got the banksters, you know, they, you know, they, they, control, the, they control the world. I mean, look, who's, look who is the uh, Treasury Secretary in the United States. Ms. Fatsha Brut, Janet Yellen. Oh, what was the last job? Oh, she was the Fed head. Wait a minute. You mean the head of the Federal Reserve is now your Treasury Secretary? Yeah, that's right. Get it in your head. We run the show. A scumbag. May he rot in hell. Woodrow Wilson brought in the Federal Reserve. It's the same bastard that gave us, brought us into World War II. The same little boy that gave us federal income tax. They, they're in total control. Again, go back to our forecasts. We said at the beginning of the year, 2023, yeah, they're going to raise interest rates, but before the election in 2024, they're going to lower them. They do it all the time to keep the pow people in power in power. You got the Fed head is the Treasury Secretary. How stupid can you be not to see this? How stupid? Oh, oh, calm down, Sulenti. Don't get angry. Bend over and take it up to you know what, like the rest of the gutless people. We could talk properly about slaughtering people all over the world, but you have to say it properly. Like that Nobel Peace of Crap Prize winner, Barack Obama, who lied his way into office. Folks, folks, he's always folking us. Gaddafi has to go. Assad has to go. 
We'll slaughter people, kill people, do anything we want to steal what we want. Oh, like you steal any oil in eastern Syria? Oh, like Libya, the richest, one of the richest oil countries in the world, and, and very easy to get the oil out because they ain't deep down? You think we would have invaded Iraq if their major export was broccoli? Look who's running this show. So I'm angry. And by the way, being that this is Christmas time, you're not allowed to talk about the Prince of Peace. How, how, how are holiday sales going? That's all people care about, or the media. There's a guy by the name of St. Thomas Aquinas. You look it up. Anyone that is not angry when it's morally just to be angry is immoral. No, that's true. It's uh, there, isn't it? The New York Times that issues a uh, press rel- uh, uh, an article every Christmas topics not to discuss at the dinner table, as as well. Uh, uh, I know, I know. They, they, the New York Times they call themselves the paper of record. I call themselves the I call it the toilet paper record. And the Wall Street Journal's now the Wall Shit Journal. They got stupid crap in there. I got I need data. I'm a trend forecaster. Yeah. Give me data. No, no, no. I'm not going to give you data. How, how, who, who, who is, is, uh, you know, Taylor Swift screwing a boyfriend? I mean, I got to hear this crap. And in Washington Post is the Washington Compost, just a piece of shit that they politicians throw out there to give it back to you. No, journalism is dead. And that's why we put out a magazine. We put the facts in there. And the motto is think for yourself. This is what they're reporting. This is our analysis, and this is where we see it going. So you know we're not selling you the lies and using the language that they use to keep getting the people uh, under their control. Absolutely. Gerald, I'm really cautious of your time here, and I know we have a hard stop here in a few minutes, but I want to you know, discuss also trends that you forecast for 2024. Where is this all leading? You hinted at the elections next year as well. Uh, Allianz, Germany's largest insurer, calls 2024 a year political turmoil and economic uncertainty, which is an easy forecast to make, in my opinion. But also uh, 60% of the global GDP are, is heading to the polls next year as well. So there's a lot of uh, what you call it un- uncertainty, really uncertainty as well, not just in the US, but I think Ger- Germany might actually be thrown into election year if it wants to or not. And I know you've you mentioned Germany in previous conversations as well. Uh, Canada, I think, is heading to the polls again as well. So, so much going on. So, wh- what do you forecast for twenty twenty four, Gerald? Well, one of the top trends is golden years. This is going to be the year that gold takes off. I mentioned again about interest rates. Very simple. The lower interest, the lower interest rates go, the deeper the dollar falls. This is the beginning of the death of the dollar. The deeper the dollar falls, the higher gold prices go up. Now we have a lot of geopolitical unrest. And one of our other top trends is bankster bust. The banks are going to go bust this year because no one's talking about the office building bust. That was one of our top trends for 2023. Your office occupancy rate in the United States, according to Castle Systems, that's with a K, is about 50%. Your office vacancy rate, vacancy rate, means nobody in them. Only around 20%. How about all the businesses that depend on, are you talking about Canada? Calgary, it's like 30%. How about a vacant? How about all the businesses that depended on commuters? Now what's going to happen? They're going to start defaulting on these loans. Trillions of dollars are coming up too in, in, the, in, the, in the banking, in the, in the office building, commercial office buildings. They're not going to be able to pay them. The small and medium-sized banks. Oh, Silicon Valley Bank, First Republic. Oh, forget that, man. This is nothing. You haven't seen anything yet. And again, that's going to drive up gold prices a lot. So, and again, as I said, when all else fails, they take you to war because they'll get the people's mind off it right away. So that's our, one of our biggest ones that we're looking at. As far as the presidential reality show, and that's all it is, and by the way, we own that trademark, it, it, they're going to... I was the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate at 26 years old. I used to run major political campaigns in Westchester County in the 19, early 1970s, the richest county in America. I designed and instructed a course that I taught at St. John's University, American Politics and Campaign Technology, how to run political campaigns. 
The people in politics are the lowest people scum crap around. These are the little shitheads that wanted to be class president and head of the student council when I was in high school and college. That's who's running for office. There is no government. It's a crime syndicate, and all they do is suck up to the lousy people that pay them off that morons and imbeciles call campaign contributions. So going back to capitalism, once upon a time, there were thing called antitrust laws. All gone. All gone. When I was a young kid, there were grocery stores, hardware stores, uh, uh, drug stores, stationery stores. Now they're all chains. The chains own everything. So the rich own everything. So you're going to start seeing, going back to the elections, a lot of protests going on. And you're going to see more and more people getting elected with populist movements and new parties, but not in the United States. The rich control everything, the two-party power, the gangs, the repulsivekins and Democrats, craps, have been in power, what, since the Civil War. So they're not going to let go. And there's nobody there to take their place. So it's going to be one jerk or another. Gerald, in your, in your mind, what does it take for people to talk more about the gold price? So far, as, like, as, as we're speaking, gold just broke a, a record high in London, for example. But there's not, no mention of it in the news. Like I just went to CNBC, Bloomberg, there's no mention. What does it take for people to talk about it? They're not going to talk about it because when you're looking at the price of gold going up, it's a symptom of how bad everything else is going down. By the way, my first buy of gold was back in the late 1970s at $183.67 an ounce. That's how I became a trend forecaster. The Iran conflict was going on, and I started playing the futures markets. Didn't know what I was doing. I was a young guy. I played gold and oil prices. I said, they're going to go up, and I turned a $5,000 bet into almost three-quarters of a million dollars back then. And that's why I became a political atheist. I look at things the way they are, not the way I want them to be. So going back to why they're not talking about it, they're not talking about it because gold is a symbol of how bad things are. It's the number one safe haven asset in the world. Now, if you didn't have Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, gold prices would be a lot higher. But again, we've been bullish on Bitcoin since you know the last five years. We've been writing about it, six years. And it's the younger people's choice. And then you have countries like Argentina, where you have inflation rate at 160%. People are going into cryptos. They can't buy gold. They can't afford it, and they're not doing it. They're buying a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But there's going to come a time when the central bank digital currencies become a real thing. When that happens, they're going to outlaw everything. But until that happens, we're still bullish on Bitcoin, Well, gold number one, Bitcoin number two, and silver number three. Absolutely. CBDCs is supposed to come out 2028 based on uh, EU paper that's been filed, I think, this summer. I think it was in June. So I'm really curious if that really sort of materializes as well, if that uh, gets handed through Parliament. Yeah, that's what I'm there. saying. Until that time, we're still bullish on yeah. it. Um, just to wrap up, maybe top investment idea for 2024 as well. You mentioned gold, Bitcoin. Is there any other asset or real asset or investment that you would uh, certainly pursue next year or yeah, next 12 months? Not, I No, not for me. And I own real estate as well. And uh, I, I just bought another building, but it was, I only bought it because it's attached to, to three of my others. <laughs> and I wanted you know, to put it all together. But uh, unless a good deal comes up, This is a time to really pay attention, watch, look, and listen, and learn all you can. And most importantly, most importantly, get in the best shape you can, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, because you're in the fight for your life. And unless the people become fighters, this thing isn't going to change. And I don't mean fighting, you know, with, with guns or, or anything else like that. I'm not, a, not at all. I'm talking about fighting for freedom. And you could do that by uniting. And this is the time to do that because we are on the most critical time in my lifetime right now, which is going on in the Middle East. And, and, and by the way, we're also forecasting, again, we had forecast Ukraine would lose the war before it started. 
If Napoleon left Poland with 420,000 troops to attack Moscow and came back with 10,000, if Hitler, Operation Barbarossa, killed over 25 million Russians, and they were the first to beat the Germans in World War II, what makes you think Ukraine's going to beat them? So what Ukraine is going to do to get back in the news and get more money, they're going to do, they're going to do a major event, to, uh, a military event against Russia, whether it's attacking Moscow, a nuclear power plant, false flag event to get the people behind it again. So we're very concerned about that, concerned about the Israel war expanding. And again, to, to, to me, we don't give financial advice. Gold is the number one safe haven asset. Fantastic. And by the way, you go back to your Trends Journal about uh, a month ago, and that we, we gold was it. Gold was the cover. Going gold. Uh, this is this is going to be the year for gold. Gold could well break over three, four, five thousand dollars an ounce. Once it gets momentum and people behind it, it still feels still feels like the generalists are missing out. Like certain well informed investors are following, but uh, it seems like the generalists are not uh, at the table yet. So no, central they're banks. Not going to. They, so. They're going to keep it low. Again, gold is a symbol. The higher gold goes, the worse the geopolitics and economics are. And it's as simple as that. Yeah. Gold Fully is agree. the number one safe haven asset, and people are going to be looking for it. Well, you know, one of my GCs, 3Gs, Gerald Salenti's 3Gs, guns, gold, and a getaway plan. <laughs> Where, where to escape, though? We're, we're going to discuss that in our next conversation, Gerald. Uh, highly appreciative of your time. I know it's between Christmas and New Year's. Everybody's busy or with family usually, so I'd highly appreciate it that you make the time or made the time here. Where, where can we find more of your work, Gerald? Simply go to trendsjournal.com, trendsjournal.com. There's no magazine like it in the world. If you could show me one like it, let me know. It's the only real trends magazine. Yeah, you know, And I'm the author, you know, not this Trend tracking, far better than Megatrends, Time Magazine. My international bestseller, Trends 2000. I've been at this a lot of years. And it's the grand total of $2.86 a week. A lousy cup of coffee a day. Yeah, the, the, the toilet paper record, the New York Times, $4 a day. Wall Street Journal, $5 a day. And they don't give you anything that we give. And if you don't like the magazine, 30-day money-back guarantee. Awesome. Fantastic. Gerald, thank you so much again of your time for, for your time. Highly appreciative of it. All the best in 2024. And uh, can't wait to have you join us again very soon to discuss uh, some of the trends that, that you're seeing out there. Thank you thank so much. Thank you so much for having me. Thank Fantastic. you. That's you do. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. And everybody else, thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you had a wonderful Christmas break. And now on to 2024. Lots going on. We just discussed it. Lots of condensed information here in this conversation with Gerald Salente. What do you think is going to happen in 2024? What are some of the top trends you're following as well? How's your portfolio position? Let us know down below. We'd love to hear from you. Make sure to hit the subscribe button as well. Hit the like button so more investors get educated, can see what is going on in the world, and uh, can, can follow these mega trends here that we're seeing here as well. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back with lots more.